Danny Rand, the child touched by fire, the guardian of the gate, the immortal Iron Fist, and the sworn protector of Kun Lun, is one of the most skilled martial artists in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and after re-watching the various Defender series on Netflix, I had to clear the air and put some real respect on the living weapon's name. Almost everyone I've ever spoken to about the Marvel Cinematic Universe's Iron Fist has almost nothing good to say about him. He's whiny, he's weak, he's not even the most skilled fighter in the Defenders, let alone the Marvel Cinematic Universe, yada yada yada. Well today I'm going to do my best to try and prove everyone wrong and show you guys that Danny Rand is really one of the baddest dudes on the planet. As with all of our Marvel Cinematic Universe power scaling videos, we will only be discussing feats and statements for the character that we see within the MCU, so that means no comics, video games, animated movies, or anything that isn't canon to the MCU, and we are, of course, assuming that the Netflix shows are still canon. After being part of a terrible plane crash orchestrated by the hand, Danny Rand's parents were killed, and Danny was stranded in the wreckage, where he was found by two warrior monks of Kun Lun, one of the seven capital cities of heaven, which lies in another dimension, which will periodically align with our own, allowing passage in and out of the city. There, he was taken under the wing of Lei Kung the Thunderer, and trained in nearly all forms of martial arts for years, with the goal of becoming the greatest warrior in Kun Lun, and to be given the opportunity to face Shao Lao the Undying, an immortal dragon who powers the immortal Iron Fist. After working his way through the ranks, the elders of Kun Lun, known as the Order of the Crane Mother, determined that Danny and his best friend Davos would fight each other for the honor of facing Shao Lao and potentially becoming the next immortal Iron Fist. After defeating Davos, Danny faced Shao Lao in battle and bested the mighty dragon by plunging his fist into the heart of the beast and was granted the power of the Iron Fist. However, before completing his training with the Iron Fist, Danny felt a calling to leave Kun Lun, and when he found that the passage to Earth was open, he left the gate in the capable hands of Davos and fled to New York City, his hometown, where he would act as the city's protector alongside Daredevil, Jessica Jones, and Luke Cage. By focusing his chi and channeling it into his hand, he can summon the Iron Fist, which drastically increases his strength and his attack potency. With his Iron Fist active, Danny can flatten Harlem's hero, and for reference, Luke Cage can endure forces calculated between 21 million and 1 billion joules, or enough to destroy a small building. He survived a missile fired by a rocket launcher, he can no-sell grenades, Judas bullets, and an explosion which decimated a semi-truck's trailer. And after being punched by Iron Fist, Luke is still in pain hours later. Iron Fist is also strong enough to send the Black Sky flying. And for those who are unaware, Black Sky is the resurrected body of Elektra and is quote unquote the ultimate weapon of the hand, who is strong enough to take on and hurt both Jessica Jones and Luke Cage simultaneously. Stick was so afraid of the hand obtaining Black Sky that he wanted to kill Elektra to prevent this. But after learning that the Iron Fist was in New York City, Stick was confident that Iron Fist could defeat her. Keep in mind that Stick had been fighting the hand his entire life and knows the full capabilities of the Black Sky, so this is a pretty good statement for Iron Fist. Stick also warns Luke Cage that if Iron Fist was able to escape after the defenders were forced to take him down, that he could easily defeat Luke Cage and Stick simultaneously. Additionally, Iron Fist can also overpower Gao's Chi Blast, which can harm Luke Cage, so it's all pretty consistent in terms of attack potency. As for speed, we can scale Iron Fist off of Bushmaster, who dodges a bullet a decent amount of time after it was fired. The bullet got pretty close to Bushmaster before he started moving, which makes the feat all the more impressive. When calculated, Bushmaster had to be moving faster than Mach 5, or roughly 4,000 miles per hour to dodge the bullet at this range. Of course, Luke Cage is relative to Bushmaster and is able to react to Bushmaster strikes. However, Iron Fist is able to easily dance around Luke Cage, juking pretty much every single attack during their encounter, dodging strikes fairly easily, and only gets hit by Luke when Danny loses focus due to him being in awe of Luke's incredible durability. Now, while Iron Fist can certainly pack a punch and is clearly extremely fast, I'd like to discuss his skill and other unique abilities at length. 
So the majority of people I've spoken to believe Iron Fist is not really all that skilled due to him having quote unquote poor showings against people like Daredevil and other members of the hand who are just regular people and you know not powered by the immortal Iron Fist, but there is a lot of context that people are missing here. First being that Danny, throughout all of Iron Fist Season 1, Defenders, and Iron Fist Season 2, is extremely emotionally unstable and he fights like it. The entire point of Season 2 is to rectify this fatal flaw in his fighting style. When emotionally compromised, Danny is unable to think clearly, which hampers his ability to fight. And Danny is a very emotional person, so this happens often, and when he is emotionally imbalanced, it affects his ability to use chi, and can even prevent him from summoning the Iron Fist at all. And to put this into sort of simpler terms, a lot of you I'm sure are fans of Star Wars. He would be similar to Anakin Skywalker, a character that's always feeling the call to the dark side, which inhibits his ability to use the light side, and then eventually culminates in his fight with Obi-Wan, where he's completely emotionally unstable and is fighting like an idiot and then ends up losing to somebody who is less skilled. So with that in mind, let's continue. Throughout Daredevil seasons 1 and 2, Matt runs into Nobu, an elite member of the Hand, on multiple occasions and they battle it out in a deadly dance, leaving them both scarred for life, each barely surviving their first encounter. And in later fights, they seem to be fairly relative to one another. Well, Iron Fist also battles the Hand throughout his time in New York, but Danny is fighting a completely different breed. When he's invited to the Hand's Grand Duel, he faces the Hand's best fighters in succession until he defeats them all or is defeated. Now, this is just a blatant statement, and I don't remember them inviting Daredevil to the Grand Duel. The Iron Fist is who they're really afraid of. So with this statement in mind, we can easily scale these combatants above Nobu, who is relative to Daredevil. During this challenge, Danny defeats two brothers who act as one fighter simultaneously. In the next battle, Danny is afflicted with various poisons, but is able to expel them with his chi and defeat the second challenger. And in the final challenge against the hand's greatest warrior, Scythe, Danny has visions of his master, Lei Kung the Thunderer. And in this moment, he finally accepts what he is meant to be, the immortal Iron Fist, sworn enemy of the Hand, and realizes he must do whatever it takes to defeat and destroy the Hand. In this moment, Danny casts aside his emotional turmoil upon accepting this role, and with his emotions finally in check, he enters a state of mind that the Iron Fist is always meant to be in. In this flow state, he is able to deflect and counter the Hand's best fighter without even looking at him. This is Iron Fist's true potential, but unfortunately Gao, one of the five fingers of the Hand, takes an innocent woman hostage and threatens to kill her if Iron Fist does not forfeit the Grand Duel, and this is when Danny's humanity and his emotions come flooding back. He is really unable to do what is necessary to destroy the Hand, and his master Lei Kung turns his back on Danny. So, Danny, before even finishing his Iron Fist training and before truly accepting his role as the immortal Iron Fist, is able to defeat the Hand's greatest warriors back to back to back, while Daredevil struggled with one who was not even considered one of the best. Now, why do I keep bringing up Daredevil? I'm not trying to hate on Daredevil, I love Matt Murdock, I'll make a video on him eventually. But because Iron Fist and Daredevil fight each other, and most people consider this brief scuffle a win for Daredevil, I have to, you know, correct that. On its face, losing to Daredevil wouldn't even be that bad for most people, especially considering how well Iron Fist does against him. After all, Stick, who as I said earlier has been fighting the hand for decades, considers Daredevil to be one of the most naturally gifted fighters he's ever known. But let's consider the fact that Danny would be especially emotionally compromised here. His friends have seemingly turned on him, and they want to bench him when it's his sworn duty as the Iron Fist to defeat the Hand. So Danny flies off the handle and loses control again, causing him to lose the fight. Anger, hate, confusion, pain, sadness, all of these emotions directly affect the Iron Fist's ability to use his chi. Every time he loses a fight, these negative emotions are plaguing him. 
when Walker gets the jump on him and drugs him, he is confused because he thought that they were friends. Every time he fights Davos, he is unable to do so at his full potential because Davos is essentially his brother and is considered a real blind spot for Danny. At the end of Iron Fist Season 1, Gao explains that his chi is poisoned with negative emotions, and when he finally frees himself from this restraint, he reaches his full potential yet again at the end of Iron Fist Season 2, where he is finally able to summon both Iron Fists and can even channel his chi into other objects which enhances their power. He does so with two guns, and using his chi, he can even change the trajectory of his bullets fast enough to collide with another bullet that has already been fired. With his emotions in check and his chi finally balanced, Iron Fist is truly the most skilled warrior on the planet, able to casually handle the hands best without even looking at them, able to harness his chi in ways that would give him enormous flexibility during battle, and truly making him a living weapon. As for other abilities, Danny knows an extremely difficult, dangerous, and ancient technique called the Devil's Claw, which strikes the pressure points, carotid and subclavian arteries, which gives the target a stroke, leaving them in a coma. Using his chi, he can heal himself as well as others. He can cause shock waves with his fists by striking the ground or something sturdy enough to endure the force that he is outputting. But without seeing what he can truly do with the Iron Fist after the cancellation of the series, I don't know that we'll ever see Danny truly cement himself as the greatest fighter on the planet. Plus, I mean, there's Shang-Chi to worry about, and he seems like he's going to be pretty badass. But that's all I've got for you guys today. What do you think? Do you think I made a case for Iron Fist truly being the most skilled fighter in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Or do you think there are some other characters out there like Black Widow or Captain America, for instance, that would be able to beat him in a strictly hand-to-hand -hand bout? Let me know down in the comments what you think, and let me know what character you would like a video on next. It really does does help us decide what we should make. With that being said, thanks again for watching everybody, and remember the motto, it's the immortal iron fist over everything, and I'll see you guys next time.